Today we're going to go over the anatomy of the pelvic floor just to help with your conscious activation of pelvic floor and your Kegel muscles. So if we look into the pelvis here, like I'm sitting now, we have the pubic bone at the front and then we have the spine, sacrum and tailbone at the back. So we can look from the outside then too, from the bottom up, we have both left and right sits bones. So the pelvic floor obviously sits at the bottom of the pelvic basin and has five main functions. So our, if we also then look at the musculature of the pelvic floor, it sort of tells us and denotes our function as well. So if we look from the outside in, most superficially, our, our first layer of pelvic floor muscles, we have three, it sits here more towards the front. So it attaches to the pubic bone at the front, comes down along the pubic rami and attaches to the sits bones, both right and left, and then comes in towards the middle and attaches to the central tendon. So those first layer muscles are more related to sexual arousal stimulation and function. And so it doesn't have a big role in continence, but can be important if they're too tight and pulling on things fascially. So then second layer of pelvic floor is one layer deeper. And unfortunately this model, there's only really two layers. So we'll just have to imagine this a little bit deeper, but they, it's helpful because they follow exactly pretty much the same distribution as the first layer. And then it also includes these broader muscles around the, urethra, or the vaginal opening. So those second layer muscles are more related to bladder control. Then if we look into the pelvic bowl, we'll just briefly segue here to the organs. So starting at the front, just behind the pubic bone, we have the bladder. And then in women, we have the uterus, fallopian tubes and ovaries, and then the rectum that comes down towards the back. So then if we look deeper into the pelvic bowl here, we can see the third layer of muscles. So those muscles are more related to supportive internal organs, also our central stability in relationship to the pelvis, hips and the trunk and also a lymphatic function for pumping uh, the fluid up from the bottom of the legs. So we can see here that these muscles really attach to the back part of the pubic bone, all the way towards the sacrum and tailbone, and then also to the sits bones right and left. So again, these muscles attach to four bones in a very tight proximity, so they don't have a lot of lift and movement. It's not like our bicep where it's attached almost a foot apart where we have a lot of leverage for strength and movement. These are more subtle tensioning uh, and more subtle tensioning muscles in that way. So I think it's important to know the anatomy so that then you can imagine those muscles moving. And we know physiologically that when we think about the direction of muscle fibers and where they attach to, we can consciously connect them a little bit better and get more recruitment of those muscle fibers.